This video is a follow-up to the one that I just did looking at the foot and also the toes and how we used our feet in the Latin or the rhythm dances and what the inside edge actually means when we talk about that. So go back and watch that one. I won't explain as much about the foot in this one because what I want to do here is just explain some of the terminology now in the ballroom dances and what it actually means to our anatomy so that you are not literally dancing on toes or misunderstanding what does ball or foot mean and what does inside edge mean. So just briefly, in the technique, when we look at the swing dances or the dances with rise and fall, like the waltz and the foxtrot, we use the terminology of toe, toe heel, so we don't talk about ball or foot most of the time. In the tango, we talk about the ball of the foot, and that's because of the shape of the dance and also the fact that we don't have any rise. Also, the fact that the tango is curving, we talk about using the inside edge to approach the foot. Well, that doesn't mean that in the waltz or the foxtrot or the other dances that you ever dance through the inside edge. When you look at the first video, we talked a little bit about what does the approach to the inside edge mean. And it simply means as we're moving to our foot, let's say taking a side step and moving sideways, we're going to approach from the first toe and metatarsal first. Now if our foot was like a board and flat, and we had to land everything completely flat, then we would not be like the building that's built for the earthquake where there's lots of flexibility for the building to move. So this is the way our body is constructed. We have these joints in our leg, we have our hip joint, which is mobile, we have our knee, and then we have ability to move our ankle in different ways. And then all of these joints in the foot allow movement in the foot. And this is all helping us to not only walk on uneven surfaces, but when we dance to have a beautiful artistic controlled expression through using all those joints and moving the weight across the feet. So in writing the technique, a lot of this is to be learned in your lessons, but we can't write every single thing down. It can get way too heavy to be reading and understanding. So we use the terminology of toe and ball and flat. And I now think the dog has taken over the camera. Come here, puppy. There we go. So when the terminology of ball is used in tango, that's really telling us that we don't have rise and fall. What we talked about in the last video is to make sure you realize that the ball of the foot is really the hematotarsal heads and all of the soft tissue and padding underneath there and also the toes. And an approach to the inside edge simply means that as the angle is shaping, which is not only very beautiful, but allows for good balance, we approach through the inside edge and then we roll across the foot. Once again, if we had a brick or a stiff piece of wood for our foot and we would have to land exactly right on top of it and we could easily overbalance. So yes, the sway and the swing dances helps us also not to overbalance. It's also this approach and movement across the foot bones. So when we shape the foot, which is a beautiful, let's say we're using our picture leg, we'll shape it with the ankle winged out and even if it's in the, the waltz or the foxtrot, though we may not say inside edge, we will still approach through the first metatarsal head and through the big toe, and then take the weight into the foot, and then the weight will be moved out onto the foot. So we're not spending a lot of time standing on this one head. So I'm going to do a little demonstration then just with my feet and with the foot bones here of how we might be dancing our edges in the tango and then into the swing dances. Let's look at an inside edge now in tango. You'll notice that the side steps will be described as inside edge, then the whole foot, or inside edge of ball heel. So if I'm moving sideways to the left, like the, the man's closed promenade, as he finishes his closed promenade, that would be an inside edge of the foot, and then that would be a whole foot. So that doesn't mean that we should do something like this. You see, now I'm exaggerating. 
and simply making sure that there's an ankle action instead of a flat ankle like this. I'm approaching through that winged position again. And then as the weight is taken, you can see immediately that my weight goes to the foot. And I'm now, again, important to understand, standing on the full box of the foot. So the, the metatarsal head of the little toe, it's very easy to see on me because I have another type of, of bunion, which I've had all my life, which is a little bit of a splayed metatarsal head there on my little toe. So there will be weight taken into that as well as here. We're not trying to keep the weight off of that. And this way, there's a balance in those four corners. One, two, three, and four. So again, it's a very quick action inside edge whole foot. So that's the action. Boom. You have that feeling that the foot, again, grabs the floor. It's not a brick. It's not toes up and then standing on that and then trying to roll down. This foot now, as it closes, will close flat. That's not to say there's not some action in the ankle and in the foot, but what I don't want in tango now is to do this kind of a motion. So there is flexion. It's not a hard stomping foot. There's a softness and a quickness to the foot. Now the lady's close promenade, she finishes her close promenade, she would be described as stepping to inside edge of ball heel. Very similar to what happens when we move back in the rhythm where the Latin dances, is that the heel needs to lower more slowly. So if I tried to put my heel down here, it would be a strain on my leg and on my hips and not be very natural. So again, you can see the, the inside edge is the shaping of the foot and the approach of the foot. And then the heel goes down as the weight is taken into the foot. This heel would have released. So you can see now between my feet, you can see how I am using my edges, but I'm not punishing my feet. I'm not building bunions because there's a lot of flexion and distribution of weight and softness through the action. So that is described as flat, but that's not to say the foot is picked up like a board and placed here. There's again this movement across the toes, across the metatarsal joints, shaping through the ankles. But you can see then the approach of the ankle then moves into the more stable position. You pick up the foot and then you'll place it again softly and firmly into the floor. Now looking at the, let's say the waltz, as I would approach my sidestep, now that would be described as a, a toe. And you can see already, because I'm going to have the action of the waltz and the sway and the rise and fall, that I'm not approaching through more of the ball of the foot, which is simply getting onto the metatarsal head much earlier. I will have a pointing or shaping action. So that is still an inside of the foot. And as you move to the foot, again, the toes will spread out and the weight will be moving across those first three bones so that when I actually move weight onto the foot, all five toes now are working and my weight will be centered in the foot. But I still have this mobility so that as I'm making my shape, you can see that I'm rolling across the feet and then coming out. So we don't describe this as inside edge when we have a rise, but we still have the foot. We don't have the foot going for the side step like this. But then again, you see this is described as a toe, but you can see I'm actually standing on the, the ball of the foot with the toes working as levers, helpers for my balance. So we're not literally standing on the toes, not like a ballerina would get up on her toes. We're standing on truly the ball of our foot. It can be different levels, but the terminology will be toe. You're always in the camera, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, come over here. You can have your picture taken, but let mommy talk.
Well, you can see he's very beautiful, so he loves to be <laughs> photographed. So I hope that helps. Sometimes we really need to be a little more specific how we address things for our own dancing, but also for our students who are going to hear the terminology. And we may keep saying the same thing over and over, even if we understand what it means. They're going to hear what we say and do it literally, and sometimes they end up making it harder for themselves or making their bodies more tense. So there's lots of mobility downstairs that we want to be able to use to make it more stable and more artistic.